Shahid Stover, and I'm here for my book reading, uh, Hip Hop Intellectual Resistance. I'm going to get into some things, especially on hip hop aesthetics and how it informs black cultural resistance against oppression. And by my side is the wonderful Nana Sal. I'm going to be moderating the Q&A discussion, uh, probably inciting as well as yeah. moderating and uh, you know, really getting folks to engage in, in what I hope to be a lively conversation about a very important book. Um, because, you know, all eyes are on hip-hop in all of its various forms, and I think A. Shahid has done a fantastic job of bringing an intellectual analysis to an art form that, you know, can be heard, like, around the world. Writing for me is spiritual, so I have a lot of questions. I was very involved in hip-hop growing up as a young blood, and so I just see the... I just see it in a certain way, and I felt that the way in which I see it, especially as an art, as a form of cultural resistance, that kind of way of looking at hip hop is kind of vanishing, you know. And so, you know, all things have their rise and their fall, but at the same time, there's certain there's certain aspect of hip hop that's valuable that I really want to preserve, you know, especially how it can be used in resistance, you know, and how it can be used to develop a certain aesthetic and how to inform that resistance, and also too, just how it fits in the the bigger picture of black cultural resistance. You know, I mean, there's jazz, there's R&B, there's soul. I mean, hip hop is just the latest form, you know, of really this, this artistic, uh, basically the latest form of art that's come, come out of this matrix, this black cultural matrix, you know, in, in our struggle to really transcend and resist all these forms of dehumanization, oppression, exploitation, marginalization. So this is just the latest answer to that, artistically. But at the same time, you know, a lot of the, the radical energy of the past, especially in relation, especially with regards to, you know, racist injustice, has kind of died down. And I think hip hop became at one point like a repository for a certain way of thinking, which was against the norm, which was against the status quo. And hence it became a hotbed for once again, this type of, of black cultural resistance. It's only a matter of time before some sort of political impetus causes people to rise up. And I think some sort of rebel music will come out of that. It may not be hip hop. I don't even know if hip hop will have a place in that. But I think what's more important is that we remember the 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 sentiment and we remember the passion and we remember the the, the political analysis that that caused hip hop in the first place. So that even if hip hop doesn't return to its roots, that there's something that will replace it that will have built upon that legacy, and that people will continue to create but do it with. with Again, I guess my, my concern is just in the sense of there's a certain component of hip hop, especially as, as, a, as an MC, the aspect of MCing and how it evolved into from artistic transcendence to like a radical taking of conscience. At first, it was just party music, like oh, I gotta get through, you know, I'm gonna have a good time in spite of the police fucking me up. You know, we just, you know, things are rough, but we're gonna have fun in spite of that. Then after a while, it evolved, and all of a sudden it become, you know what, fuck the police, you know, why am I, you know, it began to question the very social condi social conditions which gave it rise. And I think that's an uh, important thing to really examine and document, you know, what about things. I think, just like any form of art, it speaks a lot to the human condition. And I think that's what's been forgotten, as it's been commodified and, you know, exploited and gone mainstream, just like anything, you know. And, you know, and I want to say something too about hip hop. People think that, oh, in order for it to um, be socially conscious, in order for it to make a political statement about the world, it has to uh, speak to a particular movement. It has to talk about a particular historical event. You know, like you'll hear some people rapping about Mumia or rapping about the fact that war is wrong. But if you look at NWA, like I was listening to some old Ice Cube, you know, the other day, that was about as, you know, rebellious as you can. See, the, the, I think the core idea that we need to retain uh, in terms of what hip-hop gave us is this, the gangster aspect of it where you don't care about the establishment, you don't care about the status quo, you're going to speak your mind and you're going to tell the truth, whatever your experience is, yeah. and, and not have that position be exploited by those who want to make money yeah. off of it, yeah. so, you know, making gangster rap cool, when really it was that, it was that rebellious, revolutionary spirit. Um, that you saw in N.W.A., even though they were cursing, even though they were talking about, you know, the bad stuff they were talking about, they still spoke to a lack of regard for those who would oppress them. And I think that that's that's valuable. That's probably the most valuable aspect of it. Yeah,
especially, I mean, just in the sense of, that's a perfect example. At one point, Ice Cube was the critical conscience of the people who have no voice. You know, and that's the thing, and, that, and that's really important for us to realize that, you know, when you want to know what's going on in the streets, you can listen to NWA, you can listen to, you know what I'm saying, and you can hear what's happening, and that's, that's his power. It's not gonna, you know, this is a, it's, hip hop isn't gonna bring about revolution, but it can inform those who must bring, who must bring that revolution about. You know, you can't conform, you can't confuse art with action, you know what I'm saying? Art has its own thing and its own place. And so I think what happened is because, all other forms of expression of the radical impulse of black people have been shut down. The only place we can speak about these things is through hip hop and through soul, through music. And so a lot of times we put a lot of pressure on these musics to kind of carry the burden where instead there needs to be a social movement. You know what I'm saying? And that's basically what it comes down to. You know, like hip hop's not going to change the world per se, but it can change the human beings that might then change the world. But you still have to, you know, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done that involves more than just holding mics and ripping stages and stuff like that. And sometimes it might mean confronting the police, organizing, putting demonstrations, you know, like sometimes you gotta go out like King, sometimes you gotta go out like Elder Street with you and you, you know, it just depends what the situation calls for.